Bob's Breakfast with Norton Wayne Motors Letchworth. We're making wishes come true. We heard from Tom in Chesant. He told us about his mum and dad, David and Debbie. Now, David has been diagnosed with lung cancer. He's been having the chemo and the radiotherapy. And Debbie decided that they were going to have whatever's been going on, all the drama, this Christmas was going to be a belter. She wanted everything to be perfect. But the thing that was letting them down was the bathroom in the house. It needed sorting out. So they got some tradesmen in. Unfortunately, the tradesmen made a right pig's ear of it. It was a disaster. Amy, you saw oh, the bathroom. It was just horrific. I mean, you, you put your hard-earned money into professionals for them to screw something up like they have done. There was a curved bath, and instead of instead of cutting out the tiles to fit them around the bath, they just they, they smashed the tiles. So there were literally smashed little tiles everywhere. And um, there was the MDF boards that were half done, looking horrific as cupboards. It was all just done really cheaply, really badly. Um, half the tiles had... Like there was one whole circle, semicircle of tiles missing where they should have been redone when they fitted the bus. So it's just the whole thing was just a mess. Absolute mess. So we needed some tradesmen, obviously, and we found some belters. Ah, oh, the A team, I love to call them. We've got Tony the Tyler, Simon Ward the Tyler, the plasterer was Clive, Michael the plumber. We've just got the best team together, and um, they're professionals. They know exactly what they're doing, and they, they totally could fix this up for us. Also, I managed to speak to a lovely lady carol at nicholas and clark in stevenage she provided the whole the whole bathroom tiles so they're all thanks to her literally every single tile was down to nicholas and um clark and also the flooring as well so i was even allowed to pick the colors of the tiles so it it looked amazing i was just thinking kelly hoppen who's this amazing d designer from victoria beckham thinking i've got to go down those lines really really classy um richard and sharon from total cabling john oliver at ardex he helped out he supplied like the adhesive and the grout that we needed and uh, john at wicks in harlow as well he supplied the ply and the screws so the person leading this, the project manager, was Tony at Fine Tiling. He was the one that got the, this, the team of people together. Now, getting them together is one thing, but actually renovating a bathroom without people knowing in their own house oh. is another. But we had a stroke of luck. Mm -hmm. uh, David and Debbie, they were going away. They went away to Hastings. So we knew when they were coming back. They were coming back on Tuesday night. So we went round there and we met tom who asked for the christmas wish yeah. and his sister katie yeah. who's pregnant by the way <laughs> and so we're around there hiding in the house waiting for david and debbie to come home we know they're gonna think something's up because who are these strangers in the house well, they had no idea that anyone had been in the house for four days redoing this because so. the tradesmen did this all in four days they worked through the weekend and everything they made sure that it was done so we got all the tradesmen hiding in one of the bedrooms <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're in the hallway when David and Debbie came home. Everything's fine, don't worry, don't worry about a thing. So you're Debbie, nice to meet you. It's Debbie, and that's David. How are you, David? Nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting us in, even though you didn't know we were going to be here. Okay. Okay. All right. I suppose you're wondering what's going on. Okay. And I thought something was wrong. Let me tell you, nothing is wrong. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm Graham Mack, and this is Amy Stevenson from Bob FM. We present the breakfast show on the radio every morning. And we do a thing on the run-up to Christmas called the Christmas Wish. We do our best to make wishes come true. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always work out. Sometimes the wishes are just beyond us. So we thought we'd come here and we'd find out what the wish is, because Tom, your son, has asked for a wish to come true. Tom, just tell us one more time what the wish is. Uh, for my mum and dad to get their bathroom done for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> to get your bathroom done for Christmas. Now, how bad is it up there? Oh, terrible. Uh, is it? Out? Yeah. What, what's the, what's the problem? We needed a new bath panel and we had to have a new bath, the sink, then they put a shelf on with MDF and it was just like... Right, because I haven't seen it up there yet. I don't know how bad it is. You haven't seen what, how bad it is? Yeah. Oh, you want to see it? 
All right, so no, I haven't. Looked, I wanted to. I wanted you to show me what it was like, right. so that we can see the scale of this wish. Because, like I say, there's no guarantee that our Christmas wishes that we'll be able to grant them. Come and have a this look. One, see if you can do anything with this thing. Okay then. So right, yeah. Lead, lead on then, David. Show us the show us this job. All right. So as we as we, we head up the stairs. Pretty grim, I'll tell you. Is it bad? Yeah. All right. So which which door is it? Okay then, David, just show us this job, what's involved. All right, you might want to talk us through it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! 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 We've got, saw, this is a beautiful battery. We've got Tony the Tyler, Simon the Tyler, Michael the Plumber, Clive the Plasterer, we've got to thank NNC Tiles oh. for the tiles, and they all have worked all weekend whilst you've been away doing the bathroom. Can we have a round of applause for the guys that yes. did all of the work? And sorted this out. It is an absolutely stunning bathroom. We've got the just talk us through, Tony, what we've got here. Just explain it for us. You've got a 300 by 300 black porcelain tile on the floor. Um, whatever size they are on the wall. Ceramic tile. We had to rip it out, take a bunch of tiles off the wall. Retile it all, get it all plastered up, get the trim. Um, my plumber ripped everything out. Plaster came in and skimmed it all for us. We done all the tiling. Plumber come put it all back, Hi. fixed the bath panel. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you'll have me at it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be crying on the radio. And um, yeah, it took a bit of work. I had to do a bit of rebuilding, a lot of box sections and the stuff. I and can't that. believe. Uh, I, 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 if you, well, you honestly, saw the way they no made problem. it. I came over from work on the Saturday and just said to him, get out. And we've been all weekend saying we've got to get someone in to do it. I can't live like this. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah. oh it's amazing. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, and obviously Tom was here doing all the electrics. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It's amazing. Tom. I can't believe how cute. Everybody's been. I'm really shocked. <laughs> Everybody all pitched together. They heard your story. They know you've been through a rough time and your Christmas wish. Tom asked for Christmas wish oh, for the bathroom to be done. So and now it is done all in time oh, for Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh wow. Oh. I wanted to have one last Christmas with all the family round, so we thought we'd do a little job in the bathroom, and it all went wrong. That is lovely now. Oh, it's so lovely. Oh. Well, we better leave you to it so you oh. can enjoy your bathroom. and for bloody radiotherapy now. 7.45. <laughs> Don't have radio. have a bath while you're having your radiotherapy. It's <laughs> <laughs> better than a chemo. Oh, <laughs> Oh my god. Do you like it? Oh, I love it. I think you're coming down. Thank you so, so much. I love it. It's just so. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so this is Christmas. And what have you done? Yesterday morning, I got a big shock. What happened? Julie woke up. First thing she said to me is, So, do you still want the sex then? <laughs> and I'm like, well, Yeah. <laughs> That's not what she said at all. Oh, okay. You know, Julie's a New Zealander. Yeah. And, and I'm used to the New Zealand accent, uh -huh. you would think. Yeah. What did she say? She said, Do you still want the six then? She was talking about the new iPhone. Oh! <laughs> Forbes Breakfast. And now our quest begins. You probably know that the Seven Dwarfs, all of their names, sound like nicknames you could give to people that you work with. So, my goal is to call workplaces at random and ask to talk to one of the Seven Dwarfs. Eventually, I want to be able to have spoken to all seven, and then we'll see if we can find someone who would be described as Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> now, this morning, we're going to start off with the first of the seven dwarfs. Our quest this morning is to find Grumpy. I hope 
There's got to be a grumpy. I'm sure if we just call random phone numbers, workplaces, and say, let me talk to Grumpy, they'll put someone on. Yeah, definitely. And then we found Grumpy, and we can move on and find the next dwarf. Yeah. So this is a... This is a builders, Amy? Mm -hmm. Builders? Yeah. Okay, let's give them a call and see if we can talk to Grumpy the first in our quest to find all seven dwarfs working in the home counties in regular jobs and Snow White. Here we go. Hello? Hey, put Grumpy on the phone. Sorry? It's Graham. Put Grumpy on. Uh, Grumpy's not here. Where's Grumpy? <laughs> Who are you? Graham, I told you. Is it John Casey you're looking for? Yes, it is. I don't know where he is at the moment. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> He's working. <laughs> okay. Oh, so close. That was close. John Casey is grumpy, but yeah. he just wasn't there. Mm. Join us this time tomorrow morning in our quest to find Grumpy. And then all the rest of the Seven Dwarfs and Snow White on Bob FM. 106 Bob FM. Let's get the latest news now with Chris Hubbard. So we had Black Friday. We've now got Cyber Monday. Oh, it's Cyber Monday it's today. Cyber Monday today. Is every day a Doctor Who episode? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is this? <laughs> How are you, Tia? Oh, I'm good. And how old are you? Ten. You have to tell me a great dinosaur joke. Why can't you hear a pterodactyl using the bathroom? I don't know. Because the pee is silent. <laughs> I know, I know, but I don't know who's answered. Gareth. Stick Grumpy on, Gareth. Grumpy? Yeah. Oh, he's not on top with me? Why? Oh, my good God. Where's it be on? Yeah. Stick him right. on the phone. I'm not with him. Where is he? At work, somewhere else. Oh, for I'm God's sake. Up. He's supposed to be coming round. I don't know. No, he's, he's only a subby of mine. I use him every now and then. Oh, Gareth, do you? He's not an employee. No? No. Well, who's going to come round and fix my plumbing, then? Well, well, I don't know. Well, what's the matter? Well, where are you? I've just got in. I've just been away cycling. Oh, so you've got time to go away cycling, but you haven't got time for Dion to come and fix my drains. But I don't do drains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right. Um, <laughs> Gareth! Well, What's the matter? Your toilet broken or something? Yes! Well, I don't fix toilets. I'm a boiler heating engineer. Oh, not a plumber. Well, I can, but I don't get involved. Oh, really? That's Dion? That's Dion. Dion's a box and basins man. <laughs> How do I deal with him? Uh, oh, I don't know. Try ringing him. Alright. box and basins man. Right. Alright. Uh, cheers, right. Gareth. Alright, okay. Thank Good luck. Cheers. cheers. Bye. Bye. How did he not catch on when I burst out laughing? I've no idea. <laughs> Box of faces. 106 Bob FM. Let's get the news now with Chris Hubbard. Food banks are back in the news this morning. A food bank charity saying it's handed out nearly a million food parcels in the last year. You know, I've had an idea. Here's what, here's what we could do, yeah. right? We get a cinema to show us a blockbuster movie. Stay with me on this one. And this relates to food banks? Absolutely. Right, okay. We get a cinema to show a blockbuster movie, and we say to the cinema, we'll give you all the publicity and, and mention you, and, and we'll fill a cinema, and we say to Bob FM listeners, you can go to this cinema on this night and watch this exclusive showing of this film as long as you bring a can of food, and we have the food bank there on the night to collect all the cans of food. Well, that'd be good if you got a big auditorium. I've got a name for it too. God, the Cannes Film Festival. <laughs> oh my goodness! And Richard Keel, the actor who played iconic James Bond baddie Jaws, has died in California at the age of seventy-four. In Tragic way he died yeah. as well. His teeth were picked up by a magnet, and he was dropped into a shark tank. <laughs> With Graham. That's <laughs> what he would have wanted. Hello? 
Fatima. Hi, who's that? It's Karen. Karen, it's Amy. Can you stick Grumpy on? <laughs> Hold on, please. <laughs> we tell them that they're Grumpy and they are the first of our dwarfs. Hello. Hello. Hey, Grumpy. Sorry? Grumpy, well, well done. done. Hello, What's your name? Ray. Ray. Congratulations. It's, it's Graham Mack and Amy Stevenson from Bob FM. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. We have a theory that if you call enough businesses, you will eventually be able to talk to all of the Seven Dwarfs and Snow White. And we yeah. started w with our search. We were looking for Grumpy. That's me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all we did was we rang up. Yeah. So, we, so we rang up R.A. Harry, your builders. Apparently. Who answered the phone? Uh, my wife. You're, oh, <laughs> no! Well, Amy said to your wife, put Grumpy on the phone. Yeah. And she didn't even hesitate. She just nice. she exactly. just, she yeah. just went and got you straight away. So you are Grumpy. I am. You are the first of our seven dwarfs. So now we've got to find Sleepy. Another six. Yeah. yeah dopey, dopey. Doc. And also Snow White. Mm. So, yeah. But congratulations. Thank you very much, Grumpy. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Bye, Bob. Bye. 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 <laughs> 106 Bob FM Beware of an annoying trend that is pointing the way to a crisis with the way food is served. I'll give you the evolution of this crisis and remember this is merely a symptom of a bigger problem. It started out a few years back when desserts started being served on slates. You ever have that? You ever have the, the farty-ass ice cream, the, the Nouvelle Cuisine, on the middle of it? Not on a, on a bowl, not in a bowl, oh no. On a slate. Maybe some raspberry drizzle around it, and, you know, you don't get out of danger for about less than about seven quid. There it is, not in a bowl, on a slate. That was annoying for a little while, but you could easily avoid it by not ordering dessert. Just have some ice cream when you get home. Or buy something from the garage on the way home and you'll get more anyway. It has now been ramped up. Over the last six months, I have noticed that now main meals are arriving on wooden chopping boards. Mm. Yeah. And, not, and, and the slate thing only happened in fancy places. The main meals on breadboards is now happening even... In traditional pubs, I ordered scampi and chips on the weekend. It arrived on a slab of wood. <laughs> scampi <laughs> and chips on a slab of wood. In a pub? In a pub. In a pub. Because I know that it does still happen in fancy oh, places. Well, you expect it's them to like mess with your food. You expect them to mess with your food there. The scampi and chips? You order scampi and chips in a pub, you what? don't expect it to arrive on wood. But didn't your lemon drizzle, like, run off the edge? I didn't use lemon. Oh. But it would have done. Yeah. And it would have soaked into the wooden board. It's not hygienic. Unless you take it out the back and sandblast it, you're not going to be able to wash that to any kind of cleanliness. All kinds of blood and guts and God knows what would have been soaked into that and seeped in. What and you'd be you eating all that. Well, I had to eat it, but I complained. Oh. But, the, but, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, this is merely a symptom of what must be a bigger problem. The international shortage of crockery. When you embarrass yourself, and no one else is watching, it's a special kind of embarrassment. This morning, I woke up, I turned this new computer on that I've got. And I grabbed the mouse, I pushed the mouse forward, and the arrow on the screen goes down instead of up. So then I pull the mouse down, and the arrow goes up, I go left, the arrow goes right, I go, I'm just like, oh, I can't wear, I'm going to do this round the wrong way, what's going on here? Then I realised, it's a cordless mouse and I've got it upside down. <laughs> Hello, who's that? Nicole. Nicole, it's Graham, put Dopey on. Oh, hi, how are you? Very good. Who are you after? Dopey, put him on. Who, sorry? Dopey. 
Who? You know him. Put Dopey on the phone. Come on, Dopey. I'm busy. It was Dopey. You know it was Dopey. Put I don't. On. You know exactly who I'm talking about. I Put don't. Him on now. I'm talking. I don't. To him. I honestly don't. I don't. The, then expect him, Michael. Put him on. <laughs> I don't know who is expecting your call. Dopey is. Is it, is. is it Sue? Sue. Sue. Oh, she's in the back room. That's right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Go get her. <laughs> I can't hear what's going on today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One of them days, eh? Put her on then. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Dopey, how are you? Who's that? It's Graham. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's Graham Mack and Amy Stevenson. Morning. Right. Right. From Bob FM. Oh, right. Sorry. The radio station. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Y yeah, okay. We're conducting a scientific experiment to prove a theory. Right. The theory is that you, if you call enough businesses, you can eventually talk to all seven dwarfs and Snow White. Right. Right. So we started out, we just called numbers at random, and we said, let me talk to Grumpy. And we found Grumpy. Uh, his name's Ray, and he runs a builder's in Hitchin, Hertfordshire. So we found Grumpy, and now we were looking for Dopey. Right. Right. So we called up the lady builder. Nicole answered the phone, and I said, let me talk to Dopey. And she put you on. <laughs> so you are the second of our seven dwarfs. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. And she's probably quite right. <laughs> oh, is she really? So you accept that you are dopey? I can be dopey. Yes. Oh, we have our second dwarf! Second dwarf! Wow! <laughs> second dwarf! Look at that! Okay, go so ahead. Oh, yeah. That's a good reminder if she does hear this, that yes. I'm her boss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She'll make that ex boss. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hi, it's Gavin from the Garden City Cinema. Can you help us out? I can give you a 360-seat cinema with a lovely film, nice Sunday evening, a film called The Love Punch. Uh -huh. A list of beautiful stars. Let's get down to business, though. You know, we have no budget and we don't pay for stuff. It doesn't cost a penny, but obviously... The more cans they bring, the happier we'll be. Oh, of course we will. All right. What night is the, is the theatre available? Sunday, the 18th of May at 8 p.m. Oh, perfect. Gavin, thank you so much. That's not a problem at all. Look at that. It's a happening thing. The Cannes Film Festival coming soon with the Garden City Cinema and Bob FM. Bob. The World Cup of Answerphone Hesitation. This is a great game. This is based on pure frustration. You know when you call somebody up and you get their answer phone? And it's one of those automated ones, but they've put their own voice in there quickly, saying who it is. And then there's that gap before the beep. I think it's because they've taken a long time to hit the hash key or whatever the next key is, or they've fumbled, or for whatever reason. Well, that gap is what gets you the points in the World Cup. Answer phone of hesitation. The record at the moment is four seconds, set by Dave last week. Debbie tells me that this number is guaranteed to beat that four second record. So let's give it a dial up and see how we go here. Sorry. Mick Henman, Ramp Services, Luton. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Unavailable. Record your message after the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press hash for more options. Eight seconds, Mick, you've got the record! Bob's Breakfast. Hello, this is Lee. I've been a chef now for 30 plus years. Yeah. And I remember when I first started out, um, the chopping boards used to all be wooden. Mm -hmm. And the environmental health officer stopped that very much shortly afterwards because it was unhygienic. Because, obviously, when you use sharp knives on, on wooden boards, yeah. it leaves grooves, germs get in, yeah. uh, even modern dishwashers can't clean them, yeah. and, that, and we're still not allowed to use wooden chopping boards, so why the hell would you use wooden plates? Yeah, so, I, so it is against the law in a kitchen to use wooden chopping So you have these, like, synthetic ones, do you now? The, the yeah, white we, we one, have, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, well, it's all colour-coded chopping boards now, yeah. and it's uh, like a hard polymer plastic. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, so yeah. these places where you serve food on a wooden board, that is, that is unhygienic, it's dangerous. 
I don't know where the law stands on wooden plates, but yeah. I know definitely in in a uh, commercial kitchen, yeah. you're not allowed to use wooden chopping boards, wooden spoons, yeah. anything like that. Anything wood, yeah. All right, so, so my wood. point is that it is dangerous and it should, should be outlawed. Yeah, because bacteria and, and uh, stuff like that can get in the grooves. Even yeah. with uh, modern-day sanitizers, yeah. they cannot get in. You can't the get them properly clean. Can't get them properly no, clean. No, yeah. exactly. Bob's Breakfast. Anyone who says they understand LinkedIn is lying. That's because nobody understands LinkedIn. You just try it. When you ask out loud in a crowded office, what the hell's the point of LinkedIn, I guarantee that some smug idiot will roll their eyes and say, networking. Well, I found out this week that that's the biggest lie of all. It's got nothing to do with networking. I can't remember what pushed me over the edge and made me join this utterly useless waste of time, but I think it had something to do with people constantly inviting me to join. So I join, and since then I get requests from people all over the world that I don't know asking me to connect with them. So I click accept. And then I get presented with a page of people I might like to connect with. So I blindly click a load of those as well. I've no idea what I'm doing. If, if I like the look of them, I click them. Uh, usually I click them if they don't have a profile picture, because I figure if they don't even know how to load a photo on it, they know less about LinkedIn than me, so, yeah, you get my vote. Yesterday, I get an email from LinkedIn warning me that my account has been restricted because they've had several notifications from people that I've asked to connect with who say they don't know me. Hang on. You're supposed to actually know the people you connect with. I don't know any of the people that connect with me. What's the point of connecting with people that you already know? You don't need LinkedIn for that. You just email, or phone, or talk to them, because you already know them. And what about these people that only want to connect with people they already know? Why did they join a social media site on the internet? If you don't want strangers contacting you, why did you post a detailed bio all about yourself on the World Wide Web? It's called LinkedIn, not Get Out of My Facebook. We're living in troubled times. We're staring down the barrel of the end of an era. Scottish independence. We're only days away from the great jock mutiny of 2014. A day that will live in infamy. A day when Great Britain won't be quite as great. When Scotland secede from the Union, when the jock mutiny sets sail into unknown waters in an open boat, we will no longer be the United Kingdom. And what we will become is very scary. Right now, we are the United Kingdom, the UK, the yuck. We will become the former United Kingdom, the F-U-K, the F-U-K. Bob's <laughs> Breakfast with Hatfield Park Farm. The Christmas Wish. This is where we make wishes come true all over the home counties. I'm just shocked at how many great people have jumped in to just help. Because we have no budget for this. We just put the wish out there and see who can help. It's all been put together by the O2 stores, the special Christmas Wish O2 stores, 
the one in uh, Welling Garden City, the one in Bishop's Dortford, the one in the Galleria at Hatfield, the one in the Marketplace at Hitchin. They're working hard not only to get you the perfect Christmas gift, but to make sure that wishes come true. Now, we were contacted by Kaylee in Hartford. Kaylee is, uh, used to live with her dad. Her dad's called Duncan, and her Christmas wish was for her dad to have a warm Christmas, because for the last six years, he's had no heating or hot water in the house. Six years? Yeah. Now, we went there. It's a chilly part of Harvard. It's on a little hill there. Mm. And when we met Kaylee and her husband, Graham, and they talked about, you know, all this, these problems he's had, he's, he even had bought a boiler, but he uh, couldn't have it fitted, and there was pipe... He just pipe couldn't afford it. He'd had it for two years, and, and because it had gone on for so long, the job was so big, it just it was just too expensive for him so instead when the family go round and, and go and see their dad they've got to wear coats and jumpers and it, it is bitterly cold in there like, freezing we were there on tuesday night now he was late home we were expecting him at 5 30 going about quarter past seven but in that time we were waiting for him we felt how cold it was yeah now it was lucky that he wasn't on time because if he'd been on time we wouldn't have got the heat and working, but we had a great team working on this. Well, the first person that I spoke to was the lovely Rob at Hartford Plumbers, and he, without a doubt, said, yes, I'll do everything that I can to help straight away. So he put together, him and John, put together their A-team, the experts when it comes to heating. So we've got Dan from Action Electrics, uh, Jason, who's the heating engineer, great personality jason has i mean he, he kept Character. us going yeah. and <laughs> kept the entertainers entertained dan and ted who um are the guys helping in hartford plumbers and uh, oliver and gary from hbs plumbing so rob put these guys together hbs plumbing helped us with some pl some supplies as did chris seller properties in where they gave us some electrical material so it was this a team that put together the, the the best of the people that know what they're doing to help fit the boiler now we need to bear in mind that they didn't provide us with the boiler it was a boiler that was already there and i'm saying that because it took them all day to to because there was so much work that needed doing um just at the testing point the boiler failed yeah so here we are in the house we think he's coming home at 5 30 5.30 has been and gone. Luckily, he's running late, and the guys are still working on getting this boiler going. They're trying everything. It's being electrically tested. They're taking it to bits. They're trying it again. It's filling up. The thermostat's being readjusted. Valves are being adjusted. People are scratching their heads and other bodily parts, trying to work out what went wrong. It was quite the conversation in that back kitchen. And then from nowhere, this water came out and completely flooded Rob. I mean, bless him, he was covered in water. It was just... <laughs> then they run back there. Hey, Weasel, turn that tap on. See if there's hot water coming out of there. <laughs> then there was hot water coming out. They had hot water. We had a minor victory. We heard a little cheer. Uh, yeah. We went back in. I said, is it working? No, we still haven't worked out how to get the heating going. Then, at the last minute, with about what turned out to be half an hour before Duncan came home... The house started to warm up. <laughs> then, bang on cue, in walks Duncan, and we're waiting for him. He didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Hey! Yay! Duncan, you look very surprised as you come through your own front door. I'm very surprised. Who were all these people in your house? Uh, my daughter and her husband and some other four fellas. <laughs> <laughs> And Graham Mack and Amy Stevenson from Bob FM. Hi. Put your hand on that radiator. Does that feel like something different to you? Yeah, you normally it's cold. <laughs> What's going on then? Yeah, I have no idea. How long has it been that your heating's not been working? Six years. Maybe? Six yeah. years? This team here have been working hard as part of Bob FM's Christmas wish. Okay. To put your heating on. That's fantastic. What do you got to say? <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm very shocked. <laughs> <laughs> round and surprised. <laughs> and a round of applause for the guys who did all the work. You've done this all in a day. Yeah. It was Kaylee that sent us a Christmas wish. We do a thing on Bob FM called Christmas Wish, right. where you can make someone's Christmas extra special. Kaylee sent us a message saying that you haven't had heating. You've had a boiler, but you haven't had heating yeah, for over five problem? years. You fitted the boiler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got our lovely team together, led by Rob from Hartford Plumbers. We have Rob, Dan, John, Ted and Dan, and Jason from Acumen Facilities. Dan from Action Electrics. We've also got to thank HBS Plumbing Supplies, who supplied all the uh, extra bits for us, and Oliver and Gary for supplying materials as well. So all day, they have been here fitting your brand new boiler system. Well, thank you very much, all of you. It's uh, wonderful. <laughs> um, 
I don't know what to say, to be honest. It's, well, we've got unusual. some drinks out the back, haven't we? Yeah, so we've got some drinks and we'll get some photos and we'll, uh, we'll get nice and warmed up. Uh, it swells. <laughs> so we'll stay in the night, that's all right? <laughs> it, that's fine, as long as you put some sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Another Christmas wish granted. Thanks to the O2 stores and Bob FM. Hello? Hi, it's Amy. Can you stick Bashful on the phone? Bashful? Yeah. Stick him on quickly. Hello? Hello, darling. It's Amy. How are you? Hello, Amy. Yeah, good. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Can you admit that you're bashful? Yes. Yay! <laughs> Result! We, we found, found bashful! bashful! We found Woo! bashful! 106 Bob FM. We're talking about tattoos because Duncan Bannatyne, at the age of 65, now has a tat. People getting them later in life. There's not the, shall we say, prejudice against tattoos that there uh, used to be. It used to be a sign of being in jail or the navy, but um, but now you know lots of people getting tattoos. So we want to know what you've got, Tracy. What do you got? I've got a, just a small tattoo on my back with my <laughs> husband's name on. <laughs> and what is your husband's name? My husband's name is Dick Lingley. Um, we both tried for Bob. Well, just, uh, wait a second. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Just back up there, Tracy. What's uh, his name? Dick. And that's what you have written on your back. No, it's actually R H L. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because you know, some tattoo artists you ask for that on your back can be misinterpreted because they do tell, like to be a bit you, more visual. Yes. I can tell you a story about five or six years ago. We were going away with some friends, hmm. and my friends were going to have I love. Um, Rob on their t-shirt. So I went to the uh, indoor market and said, could I have I love Rob on the t-shirt? I love Dick. And the man in the, in the Stevenage indoor market said, sorry? <laughs> so I repeated myself and then I realised what I was saying. Um, <laughs> and we didn't go on holiday with t-shirts with names on. No! <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a true story. And it's a good job that's not what's on the tattoo as well. Yes. <laughs> All right, Tracy, thank you so much. Um, so, especially on your back. Oh, okay. Oh. Hang on, 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 hang on. I'm not. I'm. Just, let me. Let me just. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop this song. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop it. I'm not having that. What's going on? The Scots have been winding me up uh, uh, this week. You know, we're so close to the end of the United Kingdom as we know it, and then we have to play that. You know, Scottishness. He says he'll walk 500 miles, but come on. A lot of them don't want anything to do with England. You don't want anything to do with England. After all we've done for you, for 300 years, we've put up with your bagpipes, your spicy eggs, your hairy cattle, your short-ass ponies, your men in skirts, and the crankies. You ungrateful bunch of whiskey-swigging, haggis-munching caber-tossers. From now on, this is it, right? From now on, this radio station is banning anything Scottish, including the Proclaimers. So all Scottish artists off the playlist. You can't, you, pl you can't just ban Scottish I'm, artists. I'm doing it now. I'm going to go through the w through the playlist. Anything that's Scottish is coming off. We're not... We're, we're going scot-free on Bob FM. Well, this, this could be it, you know, because th this is a shop that sells beds. Well, perfect. If Sleepy's going to be somewhere, you'd think they'd be attracted to that. So... Hello, Betty Bice. I can help. Hello, Betty Bice. Uh, let me talk to Sleepy. Sorry? Put Sleepy on the phone. <laughs> Sorry, who, who's calling you? You, you? you know, it's Graham. 
Right, okay. He's just on the phone, that's what. That's, that's on the phone? Dude, who's he talking to? He knows... I have no idea. Right? Oh, how long's he gonna be? Alright, let, let me find out. Bear with okay. me for a second. Okay. Sounds good. Sleepy works at a place called Betty Bice. Hello? Hello, Sleepy. Hi, who's that? It's Graham. Who's that? Simon. Simon, how are you? I don't. <laughs> Who's calling? I'm on another call at the moment. Okay, well, look, it's Graham Mack and Amy Stevenson calling from Bob FM. How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah. Now, we have this theory that if you call enough businesses, you can eventually talk to all Seven Dwarfs and Snow White. Brilliant. Okay. We, um, we've, hold, hold on a second. We've already spoken to, to Grumpy and Bashful, uh, and we're, we're looking for Sleepy. And so I, ans I, I rang up Betty Buys, and I said, uh, let me talk to Sleepy, and they put you on, Simon. Fantastic. So, so you are Sleepy. Wonderful. Brilliant. Yay! Yes! We've found <laughs> Sleepy! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thanks, much, Simon. 106 Bob FM. What's the most daring thing you've ever done? David. My wife asked me to marry her three hours into our first date, and we got married three months later. We've been married 23 years now and got four children. <laughs> wow! So, what's her name? Susan. Where were you? What was the date? We were just sitting in a pub uh, outside St Albans in a place called Sandridge. Uh -huh. Rose and Crown, I think it was. And she said, will you marry me? So, I said, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, had you known each other before? Briefly. Right. Briefly. We, I, I'd met her a couple of times in the previous sort of six months. Right. And you'd always fancied her then? Well, she had a good backside on her and a fair pair of boobs. You old romantic fool, you. <laughs> <laughs> Survey out today from Hotels.com talks about things that Brits will do on holiday but wouldn't do at home. Kelly, what would you do on holiday but not at home? Go topless. Now, do you have to be out the country or just at a holiday resort? Oh, definitely out of the country. Oh, you, you wouldn't do it at Blackpool. Right, right. So you wouldn't do it at a British beach. But even on holiday, it's kind of, you You have to do it. As a girl, you feel pressured to do it because everyone else is doing it. So you think, like, what the heck? I'm doing it too. It still feels a little bit weird. I mean, for instance, I went to Egypt a couple of years ago and everyone was, you know, half naked. And I thought, no, I'm going to get them out as well and get them brown. And um, I remember a holiday rep coming over and speaking to me whilst I was topless. But it was so awkward. Oh, were, were these men or women? Men. No, I'm but sorry. Obviously... A, a man cannot have an intelligent conversation with a topless woman. It's well, impossible. Thing, if, you, if you kind of live out there, it's just the norm, isn't it? It's, you're just so used to pay, seeing women topless. I suppose it's just, it becomes, you become desensitized to it. But, I mean, yeah, it, it is very weird. I remember falling asleep whilst I was out there. And where we used to sunbathe, in the evening, they used to turn it into the restaurant. But I fell asleep, and the people that I was with had gone in, thinking, oh, Kelly's asleep, she'll be in soon. They didn't. I think I woke up about 7 o'clock as they were setting up for the restaurant with people all getting their drinks for dinner and everything. And I'm lying there. Topless. Bad as punch. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bob. There's a story in the news this morning about a woman who's had uh, plastic surgery to get the perfect selfie. She's had longer arms. <laughs> Local engineer, shall I speak her out? Hi, can, you, can I speak to Doc, please? Who? Doc. You've come through to the plumbers? Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's no doctor pl no, Well, doctor. who's the doctor of plumbing? Who's the best one there? That's who he said he was. I don't think you can be a doctor of plumbing. Oh no, oh no, it's coming through again. No, I can't wait much longer. I need him to come out, like, soon as. He was due at three o'clock today. Can yeah. you just pop me on the phone to him, please? Three o'clock is, is ten to... Is ten, okay. Yeah, it's, oh no, it's coming through the ceiling. Can you just put me on the phone to him, please? There's no doctor here. Can you try and get someone oh, out Oh, Graham! You? Stop flushing the toilet! It's coming through! Sorry, sorry. Yeah, do you need a plumber, though? Yes, I need a plumber. Can you All not right. hear? Yeah. I'm going to get him out to you. Can I have your surname? Yeah, can you just put me on the phone to him? Graham, stop it! It's going to fall through any second. Can you just stick me on the phone really quickly? He's got to come soon. Yeah, there's no, there's no doctor here. I can, I, the, the best person to speak to is me. I, I'll Graham, be able to get Graham, stop flashing the toilet! 
It's gonna, he's gonna break the ceiling. Oh, he does this every single day. He's not realising. Right, Doc the Doc. I need to speak to him. All right, not to worry. Bear with me a second, okay? Thanks. I am just answering oh, to no. someone, okay? Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hello? Hello, are you the doctor? Are you the doc? Am I the doctor? Yeah. Uh, oh, God, I'm sorry. A baby will not stop crying. I've got a leaking bathroom. Graham keeps using the toilet upstairs. I am a doctor. Yeah, I can perform uh, some miracles. Let me see what I can do for you today. So what's the actual issue? You said uh, you got a leaking... Uh... I've got a leaking... I've, I've got a leaking bath. And the toilet... Every time the toilet flushes, it opens the bath. Did you just say you're the doc? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm the doc when it comes to helping people out with their problems. That's why they call me the doc in here anyway. I do believe you're the doc. I believe we I have found the doc! Yes! Yes, it's a beautiful thing! What is your name? My name's Aaron, double A-R-O-N. Aaron with a double A, who's the doc, doctor Aaron, of plumbing. Aaron, we are trying to win a Nobel Prize by proving a scientific theory. The scientific theory states that if you call enough businesses, you will eventually talk to all seven dwarfs and Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> so we started off by saying, let me talk to Grumpy, mm -hmm. then let me talk to Dopey, mm -hmm. let me talk to Bashful, let me talk to Sleepy, all of them, we, we managed to find them, but Doc, we could oh, not find Doc anyone to put Doc on the tough. phone, but we found you, Doc! Uh, to be honest, I don't think you're going to be winning any sort of uh, Nobel Prize for humanity or anything like that. <laughs> no. I get too excited. No, yeah. okay, uh, but <laughs> we have, we have, you are Doc, aren't you? I am Doc. Yay! Yeah. Good news. Uh, oh, that's a relief. <sighs> right. No. Okay, are we all right to carry on now, yeah? Yep, yep. Right then. So you got you have actually got a leak in bath. I mean, it isn't. I'm, I'm not coming up to uh, Snow White or anything else like that and giving her a kiss or anything, no? <laughs> no. Oh, all right then. No, but that would be good. Uh, when can you be here? Can you bring Snow White with you? No, I can't, unfortunately. Um, it's not in my job remit to bring her today, so, um, <laughs> well, unfortunately not. What's your surname, please? Stevenson. Stevenson. <laughs> Graham, stop pressing the toilet! <laughs> And what's the postcode we're going to? SG3. SG3. 6HQ. 6HQ. <laughs> uh, and that's Nebworth Park, yeah? Yes, yeah. What, what number are you there? We're called Bob FM. Bob FM. I yeah. gotta go, I gotta go. The alarm's going off. All right, Fire cheers, extinguisher. Cheers. All right, bye bye. All right, thanks, Aaron. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Shouldn't you call him back and tell him not to come here this morning? I'm not going to come, though. Oh, that's all right. That's <laughs> all right. That's all right. Have Sorry about that. Have a good day. I've just twigged on where you're from. Oh, now, OK. All right. all right. Thank you very much. Your uh, if you've right. got any problems, call right here, yeah? We okay, will. Then. Thanks, Doc. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you, Doc. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> talking about your fireworks stories this morning. What's yours, Chris? Taking my children to firework display at Bragbury End. Uh -huh. And it was my youngest daughter. She was busting for a wee. Right. So I said, go over there. Nobody will see you. It's so dark. And then all of a sudden, the whole sky lit up. <laughs> <laughs> This is the moment we've all been putting off. None of us wanted to experience this again. This is an interview from last week that we did with Tess Daly. In fact, her first hello to me, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but her first hello to me seems like she's not having a good day. Hello? Can we quickly talk about Strictly? Oh, let's please. Okay. <laughs> the curse of Strictly. Is it real? Oh, oh, <laughs> you're going there, are you? What curse would that be? You know the one I mean, where, where, where married people end up single people because of Strictly. Oh, I don't think so, no. But the curse doesn't exist. I don't, well, I'm, I'm not aware of it. <laughs> it's happened enough times, though, hasn't it? Has it? Who with? 
Yeah, Su- Susanna you? happy oh, with? Yeah, yeah, she Susanna left be- her husband, didn't she? Yeah. She ran off with a dancer. Sorry? Oh, no, it's just we had Susanna run off with um, one of the dancers, and there's been rumours that there's quite a few that tend to do it. And we thought, I don't oh, think no. there's any truth in that, and I'm not here to talk about any of that. What's going on with Claudia's hair? What do you mean? Well, the fringe comes down, the fringe goes up, the eyes go dark, the eyes go light. It seems like she can't make her mind Why up. Why should it always be about what a woman looks like? Do men get judged in that right way? I don't think so. Oh, I think if my fringe went up and down, though, I, you'd have something to say, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. if you so had what's a bad going hair, on with your fringe? It was obvious. It's down yeah. today. Men are judged definitely over how they look and whether they are still looking after themselves, I think, especially in the limelight. But, uh, again... Right, I'm going to have to go in a minute, guys, I'm being told. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. And that was the end of that. I'm speechless. <laughs> it's actually quite painful for me to listen to that again. Oh, it's it's one of radio's most awkward interviews ever. Mm. I hate it when a joke goes to waste. I hate it when I go, wow, that was quick and that was clever, but no one appreciates <laughs> it. <laughs> that happens quite a lot, I it think. It does. <laughs> yeah. Out in the office on Friday. Now, bear in mind, Friday, I'm very tired. There's mm. something, always something wrong with me on Friday because I'm just, I've had it. By about, you know, uh, by about nine o'clock on Friday, I just want to go home. Yeah. So I'm just going through the motions. I'm creating the illusion of busy till it's time to go. <laughs> so I, I'm there. And Lawrence from our sales team is talking about some restaurant he's been to or he's on about some restaurant. It's an Indian restaurant. Mm-hmm. The name of it, Arafat. Now, he mentions this, and I think, Arafat, that's a strange name for an Indian restaurant. But within seconds of him saying Arafat, I said, they do a great PLO rice. (laughs) I got nothing! (laughs) Bob's Breakfast. It's another Christmas wish. Now, what we do is we ask you to tell us what would make this Christmas your best ever. And then we just see what we can do with no budget by just asking people to get involved in the Christmas spirit and help us out. We heard from Carrie. She wanted a Christmas wish for her cousin Terry. She did. She wrote in a lovely Christmas wish saying that um, her her cousin Terry is a single mum of two boys, um, Joshua and Callum. Callum is severely disabled um, and she struggles, you know, she she just goes through day-to-day life, but it's it's tough. And she wanted Terry to have a really amazing special Christmas this year. Um, Not only does she have to look after Callum by herself 24 hours a day, but um, last year they lost her nan in November from breast cancer. And then in December they lost their cousin as well. And then this year, they lost, Terry lost her mum. So, it's been a really horrific year, and Carrie just wanted Terry to enjoy this Christmas um, and, and have, a, have a really nice time with the boys. So, yesterday, we went to Terry's house. Carrie, her cousin, was there too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so was jo- Everybody was there, even the, the parrot, <laughs> Ozzy. Yeah. And we started out by, by talking to Terry... She had no idea what was going on. She thought we were there to get her Christmas story. She thought we were collecting everybody's different Christmas stories. And so we started out by asking Terry about Callum. Callum is, he has multiple disabilities. Um, Daily life is quite hard with him. Um, He has seizures every day. He's got, he's had brain surgery. This year he's been in the hospital a lot because of the orthopaedic surgery. He had his hips put back into joint and broke his thigh bones and realigned his feet and lengthened his tendons. So he was all metal work in his legs and pins in his feet. Um, so he's been in intensive care recently. He's quite hard daily, but he's happy, smiles every day. Uh, he's a good boy. And you're a single mum? Yes. Yep, just me and the boys. So things have been pretty tough then? Yep. <laughs> but you're smiling on through it? <laughs> we do. So how many boys? Two boys. Two boys, which is? Callum and Josh. We have to come clean here. We're not actually here to, although we'd like to find out your story, the reason why we're here (laughs) is not because it's all because of you, isn't it? Yes. (laughs) Yes, Terry's my cousin and I wanted to, um, I just wanted to show my appreciation and she's doing a good job. We have a thing called the Christmas Wish where we try and make Christmases better 
for as many people as we can. What was your Christmas wish? I just wanted to make their Christmas a bit better. OK, well, to try and make their Christmas a little bit better, we have some... Christmas presents! Oh, what have we got here, Amy? These are for Josh, so there's some presents for you to... Josh, because you must feel like you're getting left out, mate, what with Callum getting all the attention all the time. It's because, Josh, you're a really, really special boy and you help look after Callum all the time. And your mummy said that she loves you very much and you're really special. And Carrie wanted to give you a special Christmas this year as well. Being a big helper with his medicines. If Callum fits for more than five minutes, he has to have emergency medication. And one day Callum had this prolonged seizure, so Josh came running with the medication and also my mobile and said, Mummy, ring 999, you need a paramedic. So he was very good. He looks after Callum a lot. Fantastic. Oh, well done, Josh. Well, these are for you for that. So happy thank Christmas. You. Nice big, big, big present there for you. Thank you. Oh, well done. I'm going to pop them on here for you. Stand up. Now, in a minute, you can open these. But we also have for Mummy, because Mum doesn't get a lot of time to herself. Do you? No. <laughs> no time at all. So Carrie has organised to look after Callum and you are going to Rebecca Clark's salon to have a full pamper day wow. in the new year just to yourself, just to have whatever treatments you want, just to get a break and have some time out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I won't come back. <laughs> <laughs> you can just be pampered. Oh, thank you. How lovely is that? Thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. Oh. What treatments would you like? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, is that someone at the door? Do you need to get... Sorry about that. Do you want to go get that? We don't want to get in the way. I think Terry needs to Yeah, go and answer the door is your house, yeah. Oh, my God. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who's this? What's your name? It's Steve Perry from the Mobility Aid Centre in Peterborough. And we've come to uh, make you a Christmas wish. True. <laughs> what have you got here, mate? We've got a, a children's clipper buggy which will fold up nice and neat. Hopefully wow. it'll get in your car, help you with your hospital visits and everything else. And oh, wow. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. It's a top-of-the-range bespoke buggy just for you and Callum because wow. Carrie said that you have difficulty getting in and out of the hospital, you have to get ambulances and you have to get transport, and she said that this will help. It doesn't fold, so we have to lift it in as it is. It's very heavy. Well, this yeah. one does. This one folds up nice and neatly, so I'll show you... If how to do that and then you'll be able to uh, transport Callum about a lot easier. Thank you so much. I'm going to cry now. <laughs> That's all right, you're allowed. So, do you think this Christmas wish is granted? That's amazing, thank you. <laughs> Can we have a round of applause for everybody involved in it? <laughs> Merry Christmas! On Saturday the 15th of November, Christmas Craft Fair is run by the Welland Hatfield Murray Curry Fundraising Group. It's at the Welland Garden City Free Church and uh, starts at 10.30, finishes at 3.30, totally free entry but donations are welcome and there's over 25 stalls. You also get tea, coffee, cake and mince piles, but uh, mince pies, <laughs> Jeez, you don't want to go there, do you? No, you do mince pies. <laughs> <laughs> Stalls include candles, cards, Unless it's some kind of <laughs> medical treatment for them. Mm -hmm. But it won't be. They're mince pies. They're, t they're much tastier. They're delicious, yeah. Mm -hmm. Vintage clothing. Smell a damn sight, yeah, too. <laughs> You know, when I got home yesterday, I got a bit of a shock. Really? Walked into the flat, and the whole flat smelled of Brute 33. Oh. You know, the aftershave from the yeah. 70s? Whole flat smelled of it. Oh. So, after a while, I said to Julie, I said, why does the flat smell of Brute? And she said, she went out, and when she came back in, she noticed that the flat smelled of cat poo, because oh. the two of them had been in a dirt box, and you don't notice it when you, it's only when you walk back in. She said, so, remember that Brute 33 that my parents bought you last Christmas that you never <laughs> wore because you thought it was 270s? I said, yeah. She said, I found it in the bathroom, and I just kind of liberally sprinkled it round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, thank God for that. I thought you were having an affair with Kevin Keegan. <laughs> So there I am, all set, Cameron, legs up against help. the mantelpiece. Oh, hang on a sec. Hello, who's that? Cameron, how can I help? Cameron, uh, put Happy on. 
Happy. Yeah. Please hold the line. We appreciate your patience and we'll be with you shortly. <laughs> There is no one available to take your call uh. at the moment, so please leave a message after the tone. If you're happy and you know it, call me back. If you're happy and you know it, call me back. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, call Graham Mac. <laughs> Amy fell over yesterday. <laughs> no one was watching. Not just, yeah, did not just fall over. It, it was spectacular. Legs went up, arms went up, landed on my side. It was funny. The proper... But there was no one there to appreciate how funny it was. The comedy pratfall. <laughs> you, you embarrassed yourself in front of yourself, uh -huh. which I say is a special kind of embarrassment. Happens to me all the time. Uh, with my old computer, I used to have a, a, a Windows computer, and my routine in the morning is... I get up in the morning, I go in the shower, I come out of the shower, and while I'm getting dressed and finding coffee and all the rest of it, I turn the computer on, because it was an old computer, it used to take ages to load up. Yeah. So I'm out of the shower, I've switched the computer on, I've been in the kitchen, I've got the coffee going, I've come back, so I'm only wearing a towel. And I go to do something, and the towel drops. Oh no. And the computer goes, ta-da! <laughs> The process of evolution is an amazing thing. Uh, when we were cavemen, we didn't have cutlery, and then someone went, wouldn't it be easier if we had a knife to cut this and a fork to hold it with, you know, and wouldn't it be nice if we had a plate to put it on? And, like, crockery evolved through trial and error. That was where it ended up. You had drinks, like a cup of coffee, in a coffee cup. You had uh, food on a plate. Now look what's happened. In this place, although I didn't order the food, I saw the people on the next table, they'd ordered food, and what did it arrive on? A plank of wood. Once again, again, the chopping board, the chopping board is replacing the plate. Now, we had a chef on the show uh, on Thursday yeah. who said it breaks health and safety regulations. They're not allowed to prepare food anymore in a restaurant kitchen on wood. It has to be on this synthetic hygienic stuff that's colour-coded for the raw meat and the vegetables and the cooked meat and all the rest of it. Yeah. But they are serving the food on a breadboard which you can't clean properly. Mm. You can't clean it. And if anything, if there's any kind of juice at all, it rolls off onto the table. There's no lip around the outside of it. Not only that, they were serving, this is another one, they're serving lattes in a glass. In a, in a stem <laughs> glass. There's no, it's a That's cup of, it's a cu no, it's a cup of coffee. It should be in a coffee cup. Yeah, but then you, you can't, can't see the multicolors. Well, well, who cares? It's about the taste. This is, you know, it all started somebody, one day, that one person that put chicken in a basket <laughs> started all this <laughs> and where will it end? <laughs> Hello, right. Hello, can you put Happy on the phone, please? Um, wait, let me just go and get him. Thanks. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is that Happy? That is Happy, yeah. Yay! Yay! Bone scans have revealed how King Richard III died. Scientists and historians believed he was killed in the thick of battle after losing his helmet and coming under blows from medieval weapons. They've been studying his remains ever since his skeleton was found under a car park in Leicester. In Good news, though, he would have qualified for the disabled bay in that car park. Oh. <laughs> Too soon? I've worked out I'm never going to be happy. Why? Because everyday things that other people just take for granted as part of life really annoy me. Yesterday I was annoyed by the Toby Carvery. <laughs> what was wrong with the Toby Carvery? I don't Carvery? get the Toby, I just don't get it. I, I don't understand it at all. Uh, what's happened is, uh, Amy and I have meetings about this show where we talk about things we'd like to do. And we've worked out that we have more productive meetings if we have them outside 
the office. Mm -hmm. We notice more things. Phones don't ring. There are no interruptions. We can concentrate. For some reason, it just works better. And it helps creatively. Like sure. If you're in the same four walls, sometimes your mind, you need to get out to be able to get creative. Yeah. Now, yesterday was one of those days. Mm -hmm. Now, we normally go to uh, pub up the road there, which is fine. But mm -hmm. you needed petrol or something, so we had to go to a different one. Yeah. So we went there, and I was kind of peckish, and I thought, great, we're going to a pub, I'll have fish and chips. Go in there. You do fish and chips? No. Mm -hmm. it's, the pub doesn't do fish and chips. Do you know why they don't do fish and chips? Because they have the Toby Carvery. What's the point of the Toby Carvery? It's just a big slab of meat and some bloke with a chef's hat on, <laughs> sawing it off. I thought that the Carvery was just for Sundays. I thought Toby Carvery was oh, no. to go for a Sunday. Oh, no. Mm. No, no. It's there to, to, to ban the fish and chips and to attract old people. <laughs> it's a magnet for them. <laughs> what, what, what is it with old people and the Toby Carvery? I'm trying to think, has there ever been a time when you've said to yourself, I'm going to go to the Toby Carvery when you're not taking your parents out for a treat? Has there ever been a time? No, there hasn't. It, there was, it was just, the place was just full of old people. Why do they like it so much? Is, I, I think my theory is they like the Toby Carvery because it makes them think they're on a cruise ship. <laughs> Well, you old people like cruise ships. Yes. And yes, you see yes. the brochures and there's always a bloke slicing off meat and the thing and well, I don't know. The weird thing is though, when you're surrounded by old people, you would think that would make you feel younger. Yeah. It makes me feel old. Why? I just, just, I'm just surrounded by old. I don't like it. Anyway, um. But you're not as old as them. I know we're near as old as them and never will be. <laughs> may, may, <laughs> maybe it's the Toby Cavalry that makes them old. I don't know, maybe it's reverse psychology. I just, I just, I just don't like it. And then the waitress came over and maybe she should have just rephrased her question. Maybe it would have been more accurate if she'd said to me, is anything okay? <laughs> And the UK has been urged to take urgent action after a new study revealed obesity is a greater burden to the country than armed violence, war and terrorism. Yeah, take that, ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something interesting yesterday that annoyed me at first, then confused me, and then I had a realisation, and then I found myself annoyed again. <laughs> Lister Hospital, I parked the car and there's a multi-storey there, and... I didn't notice it so much on the way out. Well, on the way back, there's a bus shelter there, and there must have been about 12 people there, mostly mums with push chairs and stuff. Mm. And all apart from the kids, everybody was smoking. Oh. And I'm thinking, what is it with people who ride this particular bus? <laughs> <laughs> That means they're, you know, smoking and just, and smoking never looks good. And then, I suddenly realised it's not a bus stop. Right. It's one of them shelters they've made specially for smokers. <laughs> <laughs> and then it annoyed me because I thought, okay, so you're happy to deal with all the health problems of smoking, you know, the heart disease and the cancer and all this thing, but, you know, you don't want to get wet. No. <laughs> Bob <laughs> FM. Talking this morning about automatic cars and when you've accidentally left them in drive and they've caused some problems. What's your story, Jackie? I ra ram raided a garage door with a mobility scooter. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? No, I did. Let me tell you. Yes. My mum, bless her heart, has got Parkinson's, so she has a mobility scooter. My father, in his wisdom, got inebriated on his blah, blah birthday. Uh -huh. I won't go into it. On champagne. Right. My only job was to take him back to his flat and get in there safely on my mum's mobility scooter. You had one and job. He, I sat in the front, I was steering, he was in the back, drunk. We came up the hill. I was going a little bit quick because the hill was quite steep and I didn't think we were going get to get up there because there were two of us on it. Got to the garage, going a hell of a lick, then realised I didn't know where the brakes was. <laughs> went straight through the garage door, <laughs> hit the wall. He went, Jesus Christ, what have you done? I said, oh my God, oh my God. Laugh so much, I wet myself on my dad. <laughs> then he said, hang on, hang on, we've broken the champagne, we've broken the champagne. And I said, no, Dad, I'm really sorry, I've just wet myself. <laughs> 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 
Bob's Breakfast with Hatfield House. This is the Christmas wish. Day before yesterday, we met a lovely family. Jack and Isabella and their kids. Jacob, who's 12, Nikki, who's 8, and little Emily, who's only 16 months. She's such a cutie. Now, in 2004, Jack and Isabella were living in their native Poland. Things weren't going well. The economy in Poland at the time was on the floor, and they made the decision for their family that they wanted a better life in England. They came here and they worked their bums off. All the hours they could get, just so they could get on. But as far as housing goes, things didn't work out. They were bounced around the housing system. And then a month ago, the council in Stevenage found them a house. Now we went there and we met them. And this is, it's a regular house. Mm -hmm. We went inside, we met the family and the kids who couldn't have been nicer. Oh, they were gorgeous, gorgeous kids. So polite, really, really well brought up. And uh, little Emily, I just wanted to hold her. She has the most beautiful smile. Real lo lovely children. And they've been working hard to make this a home, their first home in all this time, their first permanent home, to have a proper family Christmas together. Now, we're in the room with them. We looked around the room, and there wasn't much there. Probably the saddest thing of all was pretty pathetic, I'll have to say, a pretty pathetic, four-foot-high, artificial Christmas tree with a sprig of tinsel on it. And the most heartbreaking thing of all, there were no presents under that tree. This is three days before Christmas. There's not a single present under that tree. So, we spoke to them. They couldn't have been nicer. Welcomed us into their new home that they'd only been in a few weeks. And I spoke to Isabella and asked her to tell me their story. Started three years ago. Oh, we had problems with our landlord, private rented talk accommodation, a mold, a dump, whole house, very cold. And eventually just ended up with a letter with a eviction. Because we didn't have any money. Got evicted. We got evicted, yes. yes. And you just couldn't afford to pay any more because the bills kept going up. Yes. So where uh, did you go then? Uh, emergency accommodation for nine months. They moved us twice from mm. one emergency to another. We couldn't take our dog with us. We've, we've got him. He's actually six months older than Jacob, and we had to give it in to, uh, to our friends. Ah. We're not, we've been not allowed to have uh, visits from friends. Uh, from friends. friends. Of, uh, a mum. Because uh, you know, on emergency accommodation, they've got set rules, you know, for the house. We couldn't unpack our stuff. Yeah. And we had clothes in our boxes, in the boxes for nine months. Finally, a month ago, we've been found unintentionally homeless. And now we, yeah, we need to buy everything from the So beginning. this stuff isn't paid for? Uh, <laughs> Luckily for me, because I'm working for a gas industry, uh, it's plenty of work for us a winter. So I could have... Uh, I was working 80 hours, 70, 80 hours a week last, last month. Plenty of overtime for me, uh, so... Just so we can... Money, we yeah. could pay for carpet for Christmas, so... Lots he's exhausted. <laughs> I've just done it up, up myself. I've done it up, everything for um, all the rooms, all the rooms, ah, yeah. um, landing, staircase, and a bit of downstairs. So you're both working, yes, yes, and you're just about getting by, but you're looking at a pretty pretty frugal Christmas. Pretty much, yeah. Well, we got downstairs. You see, we got a Christmas tree. You know, um, during the Christmas, that's the main thing. You know, we can gather as a family. The main so, thing is you're somewhere warm, yeah, exactly. together, that's safe. So how many kids are there in total living? This one and two boys. Okay. Oh, it's kind of a happy ending. It is. It is really. Yeah, we can, yeah, we can start you know, doing it up. <laughs> yeah. Actually, 
So you still got the work ahead of you to yeah. do it all. Oh, so mm. and the kids don't have to move again. They have can, can paint the walls in their bedrooms the, whatever color they want because until now it was always, always yeah. magnolia. <laughs> it's landlords they don't want any you know different colors really. And yeah, we moved already. How long? We ten years in England. We moved with this moves nine that. times. You've moved nine times yes. in ten years. Uh -huh. Not a great start to a new Last life in year a new we moved country. Three times, so. But there are always problems. Is that the door? It sounded like somebody was at the door. We have some carol singers. And we have some presents for you guys. Do you want to go through to the lounge and they'll bring them all in for you? There we go. Okay. Now, where are these going to go? The Bob FM carol singers are bringing in just a few presents for you to give you a great Christmas. We have a magic trick box set. Mm -hmm. Star Wars fighter jet easy kit. Lego creator kit. Police helicopter. Monopoly board game. Bayless and Harding spa products. Bath crystals. Range of nail varnishes. Exfoliating glove and body set. Mega magic and glow magic set. Star Wars board game. A book full of poems. The impossible puzzle. Dream City toy car play set. Friendship bracelet making set. Link's Apollo shower set for you, Jeff. Selection of soft toys for Emily. Because we couldn't leave Emily out. So, Jacob, Dan, these are all for you. These there you go, matey. Put those, that's it. Put those under your little Christmas tree. It will uh, be fun. I don't we need a new will. tree. We need a better tree. Let's upgrade the tree, please. Here comes a bigger tree. This is the seven-foot real Christmas tree and over £100 worth of beautiful decorations. This is thanks to Steve at Vanstone's Garden Centre in Codicott because we want it to smell like a real Christmas in here. You have the, the artificial one. It's OK, but it's really not the same as the actual real Christmas tree. Now, this is for Jacob. This is a top-of-the-range Huddle 2 from the kind team and Annette at Tesco head office in Welland Garden City. It's a cool tablet computer, the Huddle 2. Now this is for little Nicky. Where's Mickey? <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> this is David from the Flat Earth in Codicott. Now, David, you explain what you're giving Nicky. Okay, this is a Sonic fat bike. It's a oversized wheeled uh, kind of BMX style bike. It's kind of the bike of the moment. So hopefully you uh, enjoy this one. If we can bring in our team of carol singers, who are all listeners of Bob FM. They wanted to make your Christmas extra special. They have brought you Christmas lunch. Everything you could possibly think of, from a seven kilogram turkey, a gammon joint, top rump beef joint, fresh veg, sprouts, carrots, cabbage, potatoes, broccoli. We haven't forgotten about dessert. We've got the fresh fruits, the cranberries, the apples, the bananas, the strawberries, the raspberries. We've got the gravy, the gingerbread, salad, tomatoes, cucumber, lettuce, mince pies, loads of chocolates and sweets, a selection of nuts, cheeses, different flavours. There's more chocolates. There's Christmas crackers and a hamper a stunning hamper including two bottles of champagne and Christmas pudding <laughs> and all the people that are helping bring this in were all people who were listening on the radio this morning we said we had a Christmas wish a special Christmas wish we didn't tell them why and we asked them because we needed lots more hands to help us carry everything in and they all pitched in and they all said yeah we want to help and we want to make your Christmas the best ever a table and chairs, thanks to Nick at uh, Furniture at Home. He's got your real oak table and four beautiful chairs. <laughs> <laughs> so these are all our volunteers who were listening on Bob FM this morning. Big round of applause for them. Isabella, what do you think? Oh, I'm speechless. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Jack? <laughs> oh, what can I say? Just thank you very much. This is showbiz, and Amazing. all great shows have to finish on a song. Can we give a little bit of... <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your King. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
Chris Chris from Bob FM.